Good evening. Coming up in Mellow TV Evening News. Gangs set fire to houses in Gregory Park in Portmore, St. Catherine. Meanwhile, Prime Minister toured the community today and has pledged support to the victims. Ground broken for new $900 million housing development in Westmoreland. Opposition People's National Party speak out on what it says is the government's lack of integrity. And elderly man on the run this evening and being sought by the police following the death of his wife and her friend. And now the news in detail. Opposition spokesperson on health, Dr. Morris Guy, is demanding swift action from his government counterpart, Dr. Christopher Tufton, regarding distressing conditions in hospitals, especially the Cornwall Regional Hospital in western Jamaica. According to reports, patients are resorting to lying on floors and chairs due to poor facilities. Despite previous appeals, Dr. Guy has criticized Minister Tufton for neglecting patient care while promoting positive ministry reports on social media. Dr. Guy insists the minister visit wards, treat citizens with dignity, and rectify the pressing health care crisis. Motorists who use the North-South Highway are being advised to brace for increased toll rates. Effective August 20, Class 3 vehicle drivers will have to pay an extra $700 for the 66-kilometer trip from Caymanas to Mami Bay in Ocheria, St. Anne. Class 1 drivers will now pay $2,900, up from $2,230. Class 2 drivers will now pay $4,000, $465 up from $3,600 and class 4 drivers will now pay $1,115 up from $1,000. The revised charges were initially scheduled to go into effect on July 1 but were delayed to August 20 as a result of conversations with toll road operators. All additional highway routes will also encounter increased tolls. The increased toll rates are usually put into effect on July 1 of each year as part of the yearly variation agreed upon between toll road operators and the government. Gang members operating in the Gregory Park community in Portmore St. Catherine set fire to several houses in the community over the weekend. On Saturday night, several residents fell victim to a mass arson attack. The attack has sparked condemnation by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who visited the community today, August 14. Mr. Holness has promised that he will ensure that the criminals are punished. To consider it a crime would be to treat it as ordinary. What this is, is an act of terror. And the people who have committed it are terrorists yes. Yes. and uh, they should be treated as such. Yes. They should be dealt with with the limits of the law. Prime Minister Holness recounted the incident. When you consider it that a gang of Jamaican citizens living in this community. They obviously know each other. Some of them would have gone to school together. They are friends and they could be possessed by such evil to come across the way because just a few uh, hundred meters separate the communities, obviously. Come with canisters of petrol and uh, deliberately walk from house to house and uh, throw the accelerant on the house and light it afire with children inside. Mm -hmm. It is not something that the state should tolerate in any way. Mr. Holness says this is not the first time such an attack has occurred in Gregory Park, noting that this is a recurring incident. It is not the first time 
that we have seen the use of arson to displace communities. And it has happened in this area several times before. In fact, uh, if you look at the crime reports, you would see that gangs using arson to displace communities is quite a common feature. In fact, uh, I believe it was last year uh, a similar incident occurred and the police were able to intercept some of the men who were believed to have conducted the arson and I believe a few of them were killed. It is quite unfortunate that we were not able to intercept those who committed this act. While rolling out a number of resources, including housing and back-to-school supplies for the victims, Prime Minister Holness has signaled a warning to the perpetrators. We're going to treat this one specially. And the people who committed the crime were seen. And I'm going to be personally on it to ensure that every last one of them is found and dealt with within and at the limit of the law. We cannot allow this to become a feature in Jamaica. It undermines the security of communities. Mm -hmm. It undermines property rights. But it speaks to something even more fundamental. If people don't share your perspective, whether it is social or political, you have no right to try and destroy people's homes to displace them. Mm -hmm. And that will not be tolerated. Eleven homes have been completely destroyed, and elderly woman is now hospitalized with severe burns to her face and hands. The acting assistant commissioner of police, Vernon Ellis, is this evening warning the public that law enforcement will concentrate on catching the mothers of knowingly providing refuge to victims of illicit lottery scams. This warning comes in wake of the recent discovery of illicit firearms in western Jamaica, which were connected to the rise in crime brought on by lottery fraud. The authorities believe that money obtained from scams is being utilized to buy these weapons. The authorities say they intend to arrest scammers' mothers with concealing illegal property and seize their assets. The police say the intention is to reduce family members' participation in scammers' illegal actions. To combat this problem, the Anti-Lottery Scam Task Force will seek to extradite and prosecute scammers and their involved family members. Prime Minister Andrew Holness kicked start the $907 million Sheffield Palms housing development in Westmoreland marking a significant stride towards affordable housing. The project, which is part of the National Housing Trust's Guaranteed Purchase Program, plans to offer 62-bedroom homes in the first phase, catering to civil servants and tourism sector employees. I won't tell you what the, the prices are yet. They haven't finalized it. But these houses are targeted for persons working in the tourism sector, civil servants, law enforcement, teachers, and so forth. So once you are within that income bracket, you should be able to easily afford one of these units. The initial 30 units are slated for completion by March 2024, with the remaining 30 by September. Encompassing 24 acres, the community will host a total of 113 homes along with key infrastructure like driveways, parking, drainage, and water networks. Prime Minister Holness shared additional details on the amenities and encouraged persons to make use of their community in maintaining good health. But I'm also pleased that the developers are making provision for green spaces, that you will have sufficient space for recreation, because this is such an important part of the quality of life that you will enjoy. Too often, we see people becoming comfortable in their homes and preferring to sit down in front of the TV and watch Netflix all day. And before you know it, you are hypertensive. 
diabetic, feeling all kinds of aches and pains, and then you go to the doctor and you get prescribed drugs. Doesn't really solve the problem because the solution is right there in your community. Even if we didn't build specific running tracks or courts or swimming pools, but just walk for 30 minutes briskly per day. And that can do so much for your physical health and your mental health. Mr. Hull has shared additional housing developments in the works. Under the current GPP program, that is the Guaranteed Purchase Program, we have several developments that are in the planning stage or ready for execution. For example, we have the Silver Sun Estate in St. Catherine, that's 1,200 units to come on stream. We have Roseneath Park, again in St. Catherine, 140 detached two-bedroom units. We have Sheffield Palms in West Milan, which is this development, 60 two-bedroom units. We have Catherine Estates, 367 duplex studios and 458 one-bedroom units. In Savannah Park, again in West Milan, we have 41 two-bedroom units. In Brompton Manor, St. Elizabeth, we have 53 two-bedroom units and just one three-bedroom unit in that development. In Howard Avenue, that is in Kingston, I broke ground there, lovely development. 248 studio apartments in Spot Valley in St. James, 240 bedrooms and 178 two bedrooms. So that's 240 one bedrooms and 178 two bedrooms. In Carlsberg Estate in Clarendon, 105 one bedroom units. And Chantilly in Westmoreland, we have 135 two bedroom units. So you can see that the, the program is taking off. In total, that's about 3,226 units in all under that program, and the program continues to grow. Mr. Holness urged more developer NHT partnerships, emphasizing the need for adherence to agreements and accountability. Opposition Senator Donna Scott Motley has added her voice to the recent amendments to extend Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn's tenure. Mrs. Scott Motley made her comments at a recent PNP conference. That before she became 60 under the Constitution was that she would get an extension of three years. So I want you to appreciate that she would have to step down in September. That is when her time would come to an end. So let me ask you this. Why would they rush through this amendment on the 25th of July if it is not that they wanted this DPP to continue in office? Do not be fooled by the inclusion of the Auditor General in this. It has nothing to do with her. Nothing at all. It is a smokescreen because they think that the people of Jamaica are idiots and would not see through what they were doing. Senator Scott Motley also spoke on matters related to government officials being investigated. I want to ask the government if the six people who are being investigated yes. for illicit enrichment. Those six parliamentarians. Six I want to ask them if any of them sit on the Joint Select Committee, which is presently reviewing the Integrity Commission Act. And I want to ask the government if any of them sit on the Oversight Committee of Parliament for the Integrity Commission. Because if the answer to any of those is yes, the Prime Minister has a duty to tell the 
Senator Scott Martley condemned, commended rather, the Integrity Commission officials while charging the government to show up those who are corrupt. Integrity Commission has not been in touch with me. And I am sure that Residents in Hanover are searching for an elderly farmer after his wife and a friend were discovered stabbed to death in separate homes. 73-year-old caregiver Tika Anderson Nesbeth was found dead in her locked home, while her friend, 8-year-old Patsy Allen, was found in a neighboring community. The husband, 93-year-old Roy Nesbeth, is missing and considered a suspect. Jealousy is suspected to be a motive possibly tied to a dispute involving Anderson Nesbeth's husband and Alan's son. The community is in shock over the tragic events and the man's disappearance. Two men were shot and killed in Lucy Hanover on Friday, August 11. The men have been identified as Nicholas Pinnock from Codwell District and Denver Davis from Rosemount in St. James. The men were killed while riding a motorcycle on Soxham Main Road. Both victims were returning home after work at a Green Island tourist attraction. The assailants, riding in a car, ambushed the men, firing multiple shots before fleeing the scene. The Lucy police confirmed the deaths of Pinnock and Davis at hospital. Pinnock succumbed to first while Davis fought for hours in intensive care before passing away. The Area 1 Major Investigation Division has initiated a thorough inquiry into this tragic double homicide. And those are the stories making the news this evening. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News. I'm Nicole Hales. Stay safe and thanks for watching.